Hello, I'm Shannon Skinner, host of Extraordinary Women TV. Now, I am currently in Glasgow, Scotland, and I have been here on a 10-day journey exploring my ancestors, my roots, um, the Stuart roots, which actually run very deep here in Scotland. And my journey took me uh, to a woman named Lady Lucinda Shaw Stewart. On this episode of Extraordinary Women TV. Ardgown is a, a late 18th century house built right at the end of the 18th century and it stands in a rather beautiful position on the banks of the River Clyde, really where the Clyde opens into the sea. And uh, to try and keep this house going, I've been developing various businesses within the house and within the estate itself. And the businesses that concern the house are really these um, uh, residential educational courses which I run here, and which are mainly geared towards museum-associated groups. And the house was built uh, succeeding a medieval castle, which commanded a, a fantastic position on the Clyde as a lookout post, really, looking down the river. And I think the castle was built originally to look out for Viking raids, which were very bad on this coast. The Vikings were harassing the west coast of Scotland over many centuries. And I think that's why the tower was built where it was. But later on, it commanded a, a very important strategic position during the Scottish Wars of Independence, when the Scots were fighting the English. And later on, when life calmed down, uh, the castle was extended and became more of a family home rather than a defensive fortress. And later still, this house was built, which is completely undefensive, and it's a pretty neoclassical house in the manner of Robert Adam. The estate is 10,000 acres of uh, farmland. Um, there are 10 farms on the estate, um, which uh, in the past were very productive. They're now really m more given over to sheep, and forestry and things like that. And um, the estate perhaps is now seeking other means of making income than farming, which I think is the case with so many of the large landed estates in this country. Patterns have, have changed and farms are, are less productive. And so the estate has diversified into various other things. There's a, a livery business with people having their horses here in the home farm. Um, we do quite a lot of film location work and I run within the house itself uh, educational courses which are mainly geared towards museum related groups and which introduce people to Scotland through looking at the houses and castles and gardens of Scotland and the art collections and incorporating quite a lot of Scottish history at the same time. So there's a lot to be learned and this is what I think is so nice for my courses is we, we do quite a lot of courses on uh, social history in the 18th century, how people lived in houses like this. We do a course on dining rooms in the 18th century, in which we eat 18th century food, we eat off 18th century plates, and we uh, talk about how silver was used, the ways in which a house of this type was run. Um, and I think there's an awful lot to learn, and I think it's really enjoyable doing this with a, a, a group studying it. There's an awful lot to learn about how 18th century life carried on in uh, an, a country house in the 1790s and the early 1800s and really there's a great deal one can, one can learn from the contents of this house about it. Um, we're very lucky because we've got the survival of quite a lot of curtains and fabrics generally. We've got a lot of original porcelain. So one is able to amass quite a, an interesting picture of um, life in the 18th century. I've also of course in my shop got a range of antiques um, and I try to specialise uh, in 18th and early 19th century furniture, but I do have some later 19th century furniture as well. And um, I love decorative objects, a lot of painted furniture I've got in my shop. I buy a lot in Scotland, a lot in sale rooms, um, but I also buy in England and my partner buys a bit in France. So we've got a nice mixture of stuff. The well, the family uh, goes back to the royal family of Scotland, really. Um, the Stuarts were, were based in Renfrew, um, which is not very far from here, and was the county town of this county, which is called Renfrewshire. And they seem to have owned land over this area of uh, 
the, the West Coast. And I am always amused by the fact that they seem to have offloaded parcels of land at this end of their kingdom on their illegitimate children. And that is how we came to be here. Robert II of Scotland gave his uh, uh, illegitimate son the island of Bute, and his descendants have become the Crichton Stuarts and Marquises of Bute, and they're near neighbours of us here. And we descend illegitimately from King Robert III, the next generation, and our land is very close by. So I always think this is basically bastard country. <laughs> That's where you offloaded your bastards. <laughs> so the family were given this land in 1403, and we've got in the house the beautiful vellum charter, written in Latin, um, by which this gift was made by the king, and it's got his great seal appended from it, and it's wonderful that that document survives. So we know the very day that this land was handed over to the illegitimate son, John. He'd already been given quite a lot of land in other bits of Renfrewshire, but this is where his descendants chose to make their main base. So from 1403 onwards, the family lived here. And to begin with, they lived in this little defensive tower. Uh, everything was really geared around fortification and protection. And so they lived in the tower, which survives as a ruin today, a roofless ruin in the garden. But I think it's very romantic that it's still there. It has a very ancient history. And it was involved in a number of battles that took place in the 14th and 15th century on this site. Our ancestor, Robert the Bruce, was here. And um, there was a big battle in 1303 here, uh, and one in 1314. And in the first battle, Robert the Bruce was fighting the Scots on the English side. And by 1314, he completely changed sides. And he was uh, leading the Scots against the English. And won. Well, um, in the past, I think th there were a lot of famous people who came and went. Um, my predecessor here, Lady Alice Shaw Stewart, who, who lived here for the first half of the 20th century, was a, a great intellectual, and she entertained all sorts of fascinating writers and artists here. And she had something of a sort of salon, if you like. She was a member of the little circle, which is now known as The Souls, which was a little sort of literary, intellectual, and political group that circulated round the then Prime Minister, um, uh, A.J. Balfour. And she was very um, high-minded, and I think the level of conversation in this house in her day was very high. And all sorts of interesting people passed through the front door. It's really sad that her visitor's book has disappeared, because although I know of a lot of the people who stayed here, it's a shame we haven't actually got that document. I don't know, I'm always hoping I'm going to find it and one does keep making discoveries in the house. Um, we've had um, various members of the royal family here because they use this house quite often when they come up to Scotland. We used to have um, Princess Margaret every year used to come here, which was a great pleasure because she was a great friend. And she used to use this as her base in the north. And um, we've had the Princess Royal and recently Prince Edward staying. So they quite often use the house if they're doing things in Renfrewshire. And the royal family do come a great deal to the west coast of Scotland. Um, the Prince of Wales, for whom I used to work as a trustee of the Royal Collection, um, has uh, the name of the Duke of Rothsay, which is the town on Butte. When he comes to Scotland, he doesn't call himself the Prince of Wales, he is the Duke of Rothsay. And um, he's also got the title Baron Renfrew. So the Stuart roots of our present royal family very clearly stem from this part of Scotland and are commemorated in their titles. Yeah. I think. The most successful thing one can be is a, is a happy person, to be honest, um, to enjoy happiness and create happiness for other people. And I think that's something that should always be remembered with success. I think that's the most successful thing you can do, is have a happy family and uh, create happiness for your friends and your circle of, of uh, acquaintances as well, and all the people that you come across. So I think people who are successful are the people who radiate that. But of course, um, more worldly success, if you like, I think is also important. I think everybody should work hard and have a, an aim and an ambition and try and fulfill it. I think here, um, I don't know whether I count myself successful. I've been incredibly lucky in my life. I've had an enormous amount of interest through training as an art historian and being lucky enough to be involved with all sorts of interesting museums. I've, I've had lovely appointments as a trustee of the Wallace Collection in London, as a trustee of the Royal Collection, um, which was a great honour and, and, and fascinating. 
uh, I'm currently a, a trustee of Chatsworth in Derbyshire, the, the house trust there, which is very, very fascinating as well. And um, I've just been so lucky to be involved with all sorts of wonderful organisations like the National Trust for Scotland, like NADFAS, which is a marvellous uh, organisation of uh, societies that organise lectures and art history teaching. I've had just so many interesting and stimulating things that have happened to me. So I think I've been very lucky. As to whether I've been successful, who can judge? Um, I constantly battle on looking after this house and I would say I never really succeed completely with that. I, I feel that it's an uphill struggle that will continue to be an uphill struggle, but not one without pleasure. If you would like to be a guest on Extraordinary Women TV, visit our website at ExtraordinaryWomenTV.com. I'd love to hear from you. Follow me on Twitter at Shannon underscore Skinner or on Facebook at Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner. Join us next time for another episode of Extraordinary Women TV.